way it is. Is that how you start the podcast? That's how I you started. Clap? I do a clap because then you sync. You do a sync. Well, how does it sync? You just see where you do the an big audio sync is? on. No, you do automatic sync on. Uh, we're showing people the Can inside of a pod. Do they see? Is the legitimate start the clap? Like, do they the see s- it? I clap. That's the start of the pod. That's the first thing that they hear. No, I right, right after, after I clap. All right. I that's where it starts. This is all in the episode. Good. This is all included Good. in. That's all podcasts. Are. How do you do a pod? First of all, Tobin Miller here. Baby shower comedy. Baby shower pod. Baby shower. Anything apparel, else? Apparel. Apparel. Um, you, you never wear it. I didn't even know you had. I don't wear it. I'm starting a t-shirt company. Are you actually starting not, one? Yeah. What's it called? Is it called don't, baby shower? It's called, uh, we haven't decided whether baby shower is going to be the overarching uh, t-shirt company, or it's going to be going to be called Don't Ask. Don't ask. Yeah. Why? Um, I had this t-shirt idea where uh, a lot of people ask me how tall I am. Yes. So I just wanted a t-shirt that j- just said six foot seven. That's funny. And that's all it says. It doesn't say I am six foot it seven. Just it just says six, foot, six seven. foot seven. That's hilarious. So people know. And then I was like, but I don't want to pigeonhole myself to only tall people. There's only so many t-shirts you can sell when it says a certain six, height. So, right, 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 right. So I was like, why don't I do... Don't ask, and I'll have other shirts where it has something that's self-explanatory. So the company's called Don't Ask, but on the shirt, it right. still says it just says six foot seven. And then I also made a shirt that just says Don't Ask. It's in it's black and it's in small white writing. So you're basically taking the whole idea of Guess and spinning it into I'm not, Don't I'm Ask. I'm not familiar with Guess. What you don't know guess? the company. No, I, was, <laughs> 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 I didn't steal any ideas. Okay, but yeah, I'm doing. Uh, that's another thing. I'm going to do baby shower shirts too. With the pacifier. With just the pacifier logo. That's a good idea. And see if anyone buys it. Yeah, you're blowing up. Hottest show in New York City, people are saying right now. Well, well no one's I, told me that. I'm just well, I, to- th- I, I think, um, I was talking to my brother about this. I think it's probably for one single show, it's the hottest show, but I think the Take It Outside guys are bigger because they have like four or five shows a week and it's okay. like 50, 60 people per show. So at the end my of the shows day, once a week. I'd ra- I'd rather have four shows with fifty people rather than one show a week with two hundred or whatever, one fifty, two hundred. I'll agree, but it's, it's a hot show. It was hot. Here's my hot problem people. with your show. First of all, <laughs> smoking hot people, which was always the case with your show. You've always had hot people come to your show because you're usually at uh, Grey Lady. Yeah. Tuesday nights, Grey Lady. If you're listening to this before March eleventh, two thousand twenty twenty, check out twenty twenty one. <laughs> yeah, well, when it comes if back. If you're listening to this before 2022, uh, yeah, it won't be there. It won't be there, right. But now, you always had hot people coming. Hot people still coming to your show. Yeah. Here's my problem with your show, Tobin, and it's to do with you. It's the host. It's Yes. <laughs> it's to do with you. You're the entire problem of the show. It's called, Here's the thing, Tobin. You start the show, and you started it before COVID, you were doing this before all this. You would go, hey, listen, this sh- is going to be an amazing show. We're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah. Or we're not. Yes. It's going to go one way or the other, which is completely unorthodox to the usual host. I know. And I think it's smart. <laughs> you think because it's he, smart. My whole thing is I think it's fun for people to go to a show. Let's say they say six, six comics. I think it's just as equally fun for them to see someone kill as it is for them to see someone horribly bomb. I think they enjoy after the show being like, did you remember that guy? Like, they're not going to talk about the middle acts, which did okay. They're going to talk about the guy that killed and the guy that bombed his ass off. Right. But why are you... Ta- they were, they're assuming that's going to happen. I think it got some... It got laughs. <laughs>, <laughs> I don't know. I've Dude, never I, heard laughs, and I've seen you do it at least 30 times. I hosted... I hosted... Uh, Last night at this other place, right. it wasn't my show, and I did the same thing. I go, some of these comics haven't been on stage for three months, so you could see some amazing stuff, or you could see some horrendous comedy. Right. And no one, it was the first time where no one laughed. It wasn't even any chuckles, and there was right. a few comics in the back like, what? I like heard some like comics groan, and I was like, oh, this is not going well. Yeah, I could tell you something, Tobin. That's not the first time that's gotten no laughs. It's 100% not been the first time. I was standing Sticking there with, with uh, Luciano, if you remember, episode 10 of the uh, Happel yeah. Hour, and he went, why the fuck would he say that? I, 
I'm being honest. And you like, and you kept what saying. What other show has 200 people coming to it? I'm obviously doing something right. But you kept saying it in different ways also. You're like, also, they haven't really written anything or they've written a lot. And it could be good. It could be yeah, bad. Yeah, I was running on material. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it didn't work the first time. <laughs> then you went into your I'm like, let me put it. Let me do another version of it in case they didn't understand what I said the first time. And you were, Tobin also, he's a big fan of just words on shirts. He wears his staff hoodie. Yes. Everywhere he goes. I think the staff hoodie is ingenious. Genius. Well, Not I think ingenious. for baby shower, it, it applies. Right. Because you, in fact, are you staff? Because you don't I'm get paid. I'm not staff anywhere. Yeah, you're not staff anywhere, but you wear I the just staff. Bought, I went on Amazon. I'm like, I want a staff hoodie, <laughs> and I want to wear it around. I think it's fashionable. I think people like it. And the um, I went to a concert one time, and uh, I had the staff hoodie on. Right. And like, I'd say ten people came up to me they're like, "Where's the bat?" Like various stuff. Right. Like, Where's the bathroom? I'm like, I don't know. And they would just get furious because they think <laughs> I'm someone on the job that just doesn't care about showing them the bathroom. And this girl's like, "Fuck you," you know, like all this stuff. And I was like, I don't know where the bathroom is. She's like, "Do you work here?" I'm like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> well, because you, you also have staff height. Right. I look like a staff. You look like you could be some sort of security, or that you run the whole festival. Mm. You have one or the other. Yeah. Was it fish? Was it a fish concert? No, it was um I wouldn't I, I, I won't even remember it. It was at Brooklyn Bar. What's that bowling alley in Brooklyn? Uh yeah. It was some like DJ. I went with like some buddies that had an extra. That's ticket. the weirdest venue of all time. It is. People bowling as there's I had a Christmas party on. there, bowling as there's a concert going on. Yeah. It's unnecessary. Yeah. It threw me off my game. Why don't they just get rid of the bowling alley and fill it with 600 more people because it's brooklyn tobin it needs to have something how is that yeah. something different i wonder how much they're charging for the bowling to make it worthwhile to not extend the capacity by like 600 people i'm sure it's very expensive yeah i don't know i didn't ask and i didn't care because i left that job very soon after you worked there no i worked oh, there. Look, uh, it was yeah. when i was with sloan kettering yeah, yeah. had a christmas party i fucking bounced yeah. i said thanks for the three beers you cheap fucks <laughs> that's what i said thanks so i don't care if they're listening to this i've openly said i hate those people on this podcast before yeah. so it's good have thanks. you got any comments one star reviews i actually worked with rich and he was a bad employee oh 100 percent. they would say that yeah. well not bad i don't know because you are not a fan of your job I wouldn't say I'm fine with it. I'm not, I don't wake up and like rush to work, but I don't despise it. I think there's a certain level of happiness that comes from just being good at the, I'm like good at the job now because I've been a doing good it paycheck. so long. I get a good paycheck. And I think 90% of people probably aren't happy with their jobs. Oh, definitely. Right. So I'm like, at this point, I'm fine with it. That's better than 90%. Right. You got the 200 people show. Yes. You got a potential clothing line. Right. You're hosting all over the city. Right. People telling you I'm that, crunching numbers. That, they're, uh, <laughs> that you're not making them laugh to your face. Yeah. They've said that to you as they were sitting, that you're not doing a good job. Hey, man. I mean, did that guy have what, what, com- what is comedy other than just a learning experience? <laughs> entertainment some would say some would say it's for you it's a learning experience for yeah, the people yeah, there last night. it's entertainment so this guy last night tobin gets heckled guy said the guy told him he's not doing a good job did he heckle anyone else that's my question i don't think i don't think he did maybe because i think maybe too full i want to take credit for it mm-hmm. because i think by me not attacking him after he heckled me like he he it wasn't like a heckle as much as it was like a, a an attack it was like a one-on-one attack it wasn't like he was doing anything you know so and i didn't attack him more i didn't like fire back at him so i think he was like oh i'm not gonna get a rise out of these people so i'm wondering whether that just dis- diffused it a little bit okay i could you know see that. you know what i mean where he's like oh i heckled i didn't really get anything out of it so now i'm not gonna heckle but there are these people in the front row that were just like chit chat Chit chatting. Oh. It was the best. Uh, Were they young, hot uh, girls? No, no, no. This is the la- last night show. Yeah, this young is hot in girls. Brooklyn. No, no, young no. hot girls love to chit chat in they the front do. row. They do love a chit chat, especially like at your show. Attention. Yeah. Can I pick? When you told me this guy was heckling you, this is what I pictured in my head. I'm picturing a shorter, heftier, bald man. Would I be correct? 
No, I couldn't really see him. Mm. Um, he had hair. He was with a girl. Um, but I, I don't really know anything else about him. He didn't come after the show and apologize to me, which I was very upset about. But Do you think he was going there? Cause j- Let's also tell how you approach. What happened? What I did was I have this line right now. I, I suck. I suck. At, I'm not a good host. I'll admit it. You're a it. good host. I'm getting, I'm getting better. You're a good host. But one of the things that I think is like you, you need some form of way to talk to people to get them opening up if you're hosting. And I don't like the whole where you're from. Hate that. It's all like these like cookie cutter. Oh, you guys dating? Where are you from? Hate all it. this stuff. So Hate I'm trying it. to come up with like ways where it's like a little bit more interesting. So right now I'm doing how's everyone's New Year's resolutions going, which is in and of itself gets laughed because everyone's like no one's d- of no course. one talks about New Year's resolutions at this time of year. Normal. All they talk about is like December and then January, February. Correct. So they laugh at that, and then I go by, I go through everyone and see what their New Year's resolution was, and you can automatically make fun of it, whatever it is, because they're not doing it. Of course. Right? So they say exercise. I'm like, oh, you're fat, whatever, you know, this and that. <laughs> so this guy was one of the only guys that chimed up. He's like, yeah, I'm doing great on my New Year's resolution. I was like, what is it? And he goes, listening to you. Which is just a weird thing it's to weird. say. It doesn't make sense. It makes no sense. He was sense. trying to be funny. He was going there. Yeah. He was waiting for someone on stage to address him. Right, right. And you Maybe, happened yes. to be the first one. And I was the first one on stage. Right. He got it immediately. And then he was, I was, he was like listening to you. I'm like, oh, thank you. That's a huge compliment. You know, and he goes, I didn't say laughing. Right. And that was the heckle. And I just go, ugh. Like, that's literally just what I did. I go, and no, did uh, anyone laugh? And everyone else groaned. No, no one laughed. Yeah, everyone groaned. And everyone's like, fucking stupid. Oh, and I kind of looked around. I was like, ah. And that, I think, was like, I feel like a lot of comics just like attack back. And I'm like, I don't want to get in a battle with this guy. Right. Because I don't think I'm skilled enough where he, he might destroy me. Right. <laughs> I, I just want to defuse it. I'm going back to my material. We're not doing... How's your New Year's resolution? Yeah, we're out. We're out. You lost it. I lost, you lost it to the, the crowd. Chance. I'm going to go back to the pre-existing stuff. Um, so, yeah. I mean, you wanna, know, that's, the end of the, that's the end of that. But, you want to feel better about... I have two pretty good hosting stories about right. bombing hosting. Where you're killing. Can you imagine <laughs> yeah. if you just rattle off yeah, two? Yeah, let me tell you. Uh, and they were laughing the whole time. It was such... <laughs> Tobin, you've ever just fucking done well? You ever done that? Where no. you just murder from the second you hold the mic? I don't think that's the point of com- comedy. I, I think, think it's, it's about po- bombing. <laughs> well, the, the industry would disagree. Uh, I do, The first time I ever hosted was at Atlantic City Comedy Club. Yeah. Have you ever been? No. I'm not it's, successful. Well, neither am I. That's why I'm having this podcast. That's why you're on my couch. And You've had six requests for other bigger comics, and I was the only one that responded. Atlantic City Comedy Club usually fits, I'd say probably 200, maybe a little bit over, 220. Yeah. There were 14 people there, mm-hmm. and they were doing social distancing way before it was a thing. <laughs> Everyone was completely scattered throughout, and then like... They didn't even set them up front. It was just kind of like... All over the place. Jesus. And then they had, they do a bottle service mm-hmm. for AC Comedy Club. And like two couples bought the bottle service, which was weird. And you're on a stripper stage also, I should add. When they got bottle service, like streamers and stuff like that? Or was it just No, bottle? but like during a VIP That'd lounge. That'd be great. That would be. <laughs> Mid-show, there's, they're clapping their hands and they're bringing in streamers. <laughs> during the show. Yeah, yeah. They have a disco ball going on during your <laughs> set. They might as well. They might as well do that with the two stripper poles and TVs playing in back of you. And then I did my set. I didn't do well. And then I was supposed to bring up the next guy. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea who he was. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know his name. So what did you do? I said, I looked at him. And I said, I'll be honest. (laughs) See with the honesty. I don't remember your name. And he, he just went, let's be honest. It doesn't matter. He goes, I don't know yours either. Just get the fuck off the stage. And also, he's like, make sure you tell them I came in third in Philly's Funniest. And I was like, I'll be, I'm, no one cares, man. Jesus. No one cares at all that you came in third in Philly's Funniest. And then uh, the next show I did, I did a joke about uh, how my dad called me a Pollock. Uh-huh. And that got laughs. And then I forgot what joke I told after that. And this line of men, 12 men together, big jacked men, 
one guy said, uh, hey, stop with this bullshit and talk about the fucking Polacks. <laughs> and I was like, all right, well, I'm going to stop. And then I found out the next morning we ran into those guys. The guy who heckled me, uh-huh. he lost 50K on March Madness. Before the show or after the show? Before the show. Oh, and the only reason wow. he bought a ticket was to not gamble on March Madness It was anymore. the only thing he could afford at that point. Yeah. It was a $20 ticket to Atlantic City Comedy Club. To watch me and bomb my ass off second time ever hosting. The heckles are we the he- the heckles are weird. What's the weirdest heckle you've ever gotten? I just usually don't get them because I'm not like an aggressive really comic. I usually don't get heckled. No one's even yelled during your set. People yell, but I immediately I'm just like, oh yeah. I don't like it. I don't like. Don't I address. usually don't address. I'm like, all right, you know, and then I just keep going, and I just I'm like, you know, you're a power through guy. Yeah, I'm like, this isn't what I'm here to do. I'm not equipped for it. There's, I feel like there's a certain percent chance, large percent chance that I fail, and then the whole set. Oh, ruined. of course. There's a twenty percent chance I succeed in taking down this guy. That's a confidence thing. Now we're getting into like 80, psychology. And then there's an eighty percent chance I don't. So I'm like, I'm just gonna fucking continue with the set. I have a better chance of doing well, not addressing the heckler. But if it, if it gets to a certain point, I'll address it. But I always play on the defense. I'm like, ah, I am what I, you know, I don't yeah. like attack them. You're going with the Mayweather defense. Yes. You're not, now you're yes. just you're just reacting to the punches. You're going with it, jab, jab. <laughs> you win by decision. Exactly. One guy, I did a uh, upstate. What's the upstate mall? It's not that upstate. I don't know. I Palisades. Told you I'm, I told you Palisades I'm not successful. Mall. I don't know any of these venues. Palisades <laughs> Mall. Fuck. Levity Live. That's All where right. I yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, Levity yeah. Live. Yeah. Another gigantic club where no one was at. All these places, they're spending too much on real estate. They need to put a bowling bowling alley. alley Half. (laughs) Name another comedy venue that's seventy five percent comedy, twenty five percent horseshoes. (laughs) No one. We could do that. We should do horseshoes. We could invest into this. And I was I was doing my set bullet spot, and uh, I was talking about how bad my college was. Uh And one guy said, "At least you know how to read." That was his heckle? That was his heckle. In his defense, I was doing very poorly. <laughs> He's like, at least you know how to read. And I was like, are you saying you, oh, you don't know how to read? That's what I thought immediately. I was like, well, is he like making fun of himself? But what I'm saying is like... Like he was like, I think he was trying he to was help trying to say me. that you're not funny. At least you know how to read. He's like, at least you I can't do know. comedy. At least you know how to read. Because when I first, when you first said that, I was like, oh, he's saying he can't read. Then That's maybe what, what was going on in his head was like he's not he can't do comedy, but at least he can read. I said like, are you saying you don't know how to read? And he was like, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> like, I don't know. At <laughs> least like, you can right. think too. <laughs> also, that show I went up to, it's raining men. Oh, that was man. my my intro. Did song. you ask for that? I did ask for that. Right. In Levity Live's defense, I did ask for that. Jeez. Also, that show I opened with soup dumplings, my famous soup dumpling bit. Right. And I asked uh, people if they knew what soup dumplings were. And believe it or not, in upstate New York, they didn't know what it was. No one knew what soup dumplings were. And then there was a table of Asian girls. And I said, Do you guys know what soup dumplings are? And they looked at me like, Why would you ask us? They're like, No, of course <laughs> not. And they were like, We don't know what that shit is. And I was like, Wasn't expecting you to sound like that. <laughs> they have like southern accents. <laughs> yeah, they had a, And I'm like, We're in fucking Nyack, New York. Another thing about the show last night. Which I think was crazy. Um, the producers uh, offered to give me a ride home last night. That's right? very weird. After no, here's the, before the show, they were like, "Where do you live?" And I was like, "Chinatown, Lower East Side." And right, they were right, like, right. "All right, cool, you know." And I was like, "Where do you guys live?" This guy was like the Bronx, and this guy was like upstate or like a uh, Upper East Side. And then after the show, he's like, "You want to get a ride home? I'm driving the other producer home." I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, you know. And I was like, "You just drive me up like anywhere east." So we're we're driving, and uh, first of all, I took a I took a mini edible when post I post show after after I brought up the last comic. That's fun. So I'm like on my way home. It'll start hitting, and you know I'll have fun. Right. But I didn't want to affect my hosting set, which you you know. Of course, you're maybe being clear mind. Of course, for, for, for you have to make I sure when someone heckles you, fun. you don't react. <laughs> <laughs> so all of a sudden. I'm like, I don't think this guy's like dropped me off anywhere near my apartment. Like I told him I live in Chinatown. We're in Brooklyn. I thought he would go straight over 
to Manhattan and drop right. me off somewhere east village, midtown. Right. All of a sudden, I see there were a creek in the cave, which is a story. Oh no, he's taking the Fifty Ninth Street Bridge. Yes. So he goes, and I'm like, I don't really know these guys that well, and so like, uh, all of a sudden, I'm like, I think I'm farther away now than I was at the venue. A million percent. And they're like, oh, sorry, where do you live? I thought you were, and I was like, no, I fucking told you Chinatown Lower East Side. So then we get over the bridge, and I'm like, I'll get out here. Like, I just need to get out of this car. I don't know where we're going anymore. I'm out. So I I biked home, but I was like, why would you offer to drive me home? You want to know why? Knowing that I'm Lower East Side when you're going Upper East Side. Because they were both the producers, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that during your hosting set and they saw what you did with the heckler and they went <laughs> They want punishment. You, you want to open you want to offer this guy a ride home and then bring him nowhere near his fucking apartment? Is that what you want to do? And he was like, Yeah, fuck Tobin. <laughs> they they asked you to host just to watch you fucking bomb. Oh, they man. planted that guy. I did not bomb I did, I had spot No, you, spy, did well. you, did well. you did well. You did well. My my jokes that do well did well. I got heckled where there's a 30 second moment of awkwardness. Up top, there's a little bit of awkwardness. First of all, there's a train going right by you. Behind. Yeah, at that you, venue. Yeah. Have you been to it? Uh huh. It's insane. Right by. You would almost think that they would like put up like a little bit of like, I don't even know. Not what could you put not there? Not styrofoam, but something to mask it a little bit to like make. Make the noise not you as think apparent. Fucking styrofoam is going to absorb sort of insulation. What is going to insulate a subway going right by your, I'm not a your sound, feet? I'm not a sound guy. You're not a sound no, you're the guy. Sound you make guy. t-shirts. You're the sound guy. You have a podcast. I do have a podcast. You have a podcast where you're trying to break the podcast record. Right. The longest podcast stream record. The longest consecutive podcast, which is 42 hours right now, I think. I was talking to a guy after the show who recently broke a world record. He says you have to pay Guinness $12,000 for him to even come. Bullshit. Which is insane. That's insane. Right? What did, What was the record he broke? He broke like, I think, amount of candles, lit candles in his mouth. So I think he put like 200 did candles and there? they lit all of it. He worked for Vice, so they just needed some sort oh, of Oh, okay. They are just like, let's figure out a world record that you can break. And he's like, I can fit a lot of things in my mouth. And they're like, good, should we do things not on fire? <laughs> and he's like, I prefer the fire. I prefer if we lit what's in my mouth. Vice is so fucking stupid. I don't know how. There was, there they was could a, afford it, though. There was a video that just got released on, like, why being tall isn't that great. Being tall is great. And it's great, but, like, they were, like, bringing up all this stuff. And I'm like, how are you going to do eight minutes uh, who's watching this? And it was just so uninteresting. They were like doing statistics like, ah, oh, if you're a tall man, you get more money and stuff like that. And if you're a tall woman, no one wants to date you and all this stuff. And I'm like, you're basically, who's watching this and being like, oh, I never knew that. If I were to guess who Vice's demographic is, I would say it's short men who aren't <laughs> doing well and tall women with nose piercings. That would be my guess of who Vice's demo is. And I think I'd be right on the money with those two. What did it's this guy look Bro- like? It's just Brooklyn. Neck tie- Dude, I went to Brooklyn it's just yesterday. Brooklyn. That's all the vice is. I walked to Manhattan Bridge yesterday. Yeah. And I hated every person on that bridge. Yes. Everyone in Brooklyn looks like they watched a movie about Brooklyn and right. then moved over. And then dressed like the people that they saw in the movie. It's it's ridiculous. Right. I thought everyone like was fucking with me. It's kind of like there, there's no... Uh, what is it called? Individual. Like th- No one's an individual over there. They all think that they're an individual because they're like doing the Brooklyn thing and like dressing all weird. But when everyone dresses weird like that, they're not the individual. The hipster isn't a hipster anymore. No, it's all it, a hipster is the accountant's the hipster now because no oh one's do, no one's doing. It's almost reversed because the desk job is now what people don't want. You know, it's like oh, you're not a barista, you're not walking dogs, right? You're like no, you're I'm making an account- money. Yeah, I'm an accountant. You cuck. Yeah, that's the hipster now. I hate everyone was like wearing a bandana yeah. and I knew it wasn't because of COVID. Right. That's what made me mad. They have masks and they're like, let me do a bandana because it might look cooler. They were already wearing, they've been wearing bandanas since like 2011. Right. I feel like some of these people, everyone has leg tattoos. Yeah. When did that become a thing? Leg tattoos. They're just scared because you can cover up a leg tattoo. Wow. I didn't even think of that. 
arm tattoos. You can't you can't cover up in certain things. Most people just wear pants though. I don't, do you have any tattoos? I have no tattoos. You, you don't have tattoos? One? No. No. I've thought about it. I've thought about it. But I'm not. <laughs> just like everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm not going to go through the process. Yeah. <laughs> you got to make a reservation. That's a turn off for me already. I just don't like how uh, you don't know how your body is going to end up. So mm. it could morph. Certain tattoos. What's that the look design? Because you, you're an accountant. You're, uh, you're just a white kid who was in a ska well, band. If I just answered. Just answered. <laughs> who, who is it? My Do brother. I know him? No, uh, I don't brother. know him. What would be the tattoo? Because your interests don't match you. Right. I would do. I was thinking about. It. I would do a. Uh, a whale tail breaching the surface of the ocean. I want to hit you right, right in the f- where a whale t- in your stomach on your like side. On the side right here. Why? It would be a whale tail, and it would have some nice shades of blue and kind of like the foam, the white spray. I'm a big. Here's what it was. Tell it's, me, bring me through the mindset of this because it's good so now. fucking stupid. It's not going to sound good now, especially just because that's how all tattoos are. None of the, none of the stories line up. It's like, oh, my dad died on this day. It's like whatever. But this one, I was living in California for like six years. Hartford Whalers is the Connecticut. I'm from Connecticut. Right, right, right. So I was like, I want something that like represents where I'm from, you know, all this stuff. And I was like, Whalers, but I don't want a logo of a extinct hockey team. Right, because so they I was like, left when I you do were, a whale? six? Yeah, 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 yeah. I went to some games. Okay. I went to some games. Um, so I was like, why don't I get a whale tail? And I want something, I think that because I'm so pale, I think color would look good <laughs> on me. You know what I mean? So you, I feel like a colored tattoo because I'm so white would really pop out. Or would it make the rest of you look even whiter? Probably. I would, it would make my whiteness that. pop, which I want. <laughs> no, is that what you're looking for? Because that's what the industry is looking for now. Whiter. <laughs> this guy's just too white. He's so white. We need to get them. You wanted. You, you wanted think albinos get anything? Black albinos. Black albinos, not white albinos. I played lacrosse in college with a kid who was a black albino. He was also right. blind. We weren't very good. All right. Yeah. Did he have red eyes? He did have red eyes, but he had like it was very like very green. It was very weird. Because that's like one of the attributes. Well, he of was an blind albino. also, so like his eyes right, were completely. Any, he didn't have any eyes. <laughs> he, they, he might as well not have. Was he a sunglass blind guy? Yeah, or he was sunglass he... blind. So his eyes were so crooked uh-huh. that he was like, "I'm just gonna wear the sunglasses." Jesus. And he also missed every pass and missed every ground ball. But wait, I I, I I I missed that part. So he played he organized was on, sports. Right, he played blind. lacrosse. And we lacrosse, were just, lacrosse is one of like the most it was hand-eye very important things. It's very important to have eyes in lacrosse. But he was just a good guy, <laughs> Archie. And then he started getting mad why we weren't putting him in, and we were like, "Why do you think we're not putting you in? You can't fucking see." He how was, old was this? How old was this? How how old was it? Were you he was guys? A was it like little league or was it? High, it was no, high it was school? Uh, college. Uh, it was college? club lacrosse. Yeah, college club lacrosse, Division One. No, no big deal. We made the final four that year too, but yeah. Is he just getting blindsided by hits? Like he's just kind of running aimlessly. We also like ki- fucking- Oh yeah, he would just fucking go. Like he would just run, and you're like, you missed the. G-. And he played defense too. Like it wasn't like he was a midi or anything. How many can, you can, he? Can, how would he catch it? Could he hear? Is his hearing that good where he could hear where the ball was coming from? You know what I mean? He missed every pass. And every defenseman who had the ball in front of him. All of them. But. Would you guys go tell him to chase the ball if he missed it? You're like, go grab the ball. Like, go chase. That would be the end of practice. We, I honestly, (laughs) we did it once and then we never saw him again. He's still looking for the ball. That'd be a good sketch. You should do that sketch. (laughs) That would be a good sketch. We got to get Peter Wong on it. (laughs) Shout out Peter Wong. Shout out. Shouts Peter Wong. I can't believe that he would even consider playing in an organized sport. There's so many other sport like swimming. Why isn't he swimming? Do blind people swim? Well, I guess, yeah, of course no, they can swim. All, yeah, all, but think, then he'd bash his fucking hand in. No, I think that what they do for blind people is they have a little sensor that puts out little echoes. Listen, this is club. We're doing club here. Right. We don't have this the budget Cortland. for sensors. <laughs> right. This is club Cortland. This, this isn't even a good Cortland. school. I can't wait until you're like, that wasn't the only handicapped person on our team. <laughs> no, first of all, everyone was mentally handicapped on my team. They're, none of them are doing well. But he was the only physically handicapped person. 
Also, let's also say that you were the captain yeah. of the worst prep school basketball team. There may have been one other team in New that England was history. Bad, worse. Yeah. Led the team to a three and seventeen season, uh both my junior and senior year. Both years three and seventeen. Both years we were three and seventeen. You, you I wasn't the captain junior year. You were consistent. Uh we knew we were bad. There was another team that we were playing. I think it was Pomfrey or something. I don't know what what which one it was, but we were playing. And we were both the school? two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All of them half deaf, half blind. They yeah, mixed them up. To, yeah. <laughs> they complement each other. Um, there was one team where we were playing, and we beat them by like two points. And the opposing team, there's this kid crying. He goes, "We even lost to Westminster." Like that's how <laughs> bad both of our teams were. Where we both knew that this is the only chance to get a win here. Did you guys give out scholarships? Yeah, we were a big. We were only like I don't know, three hundred and fifty people, and our big sport um, hockey probably was hockey. Yeah. yeah, hockey and lacrosse. So like we had like kids that went to BC. We had a couple NHL players, uh, Ben Smith, Tommy Cross. Actually, yeah, Boston Ben Bruins. Smith. Yeah, you know Ben Smith. Yeah, he's on the yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Hawks yeah. or the yeah Blackhawks. Of course. Yeah, he went to my school. Does um, he know you? He probably heard of me. No. Probably heard of you? <laughs> Wait. What if I say, you know Tobin Miller? And he goes, baby shower comedy? It's like, yeah, I know baby shower comedy. He's like the guy that the fucking three and 17. But no, we were, we were horrendous. There was one game we were playing. Avon Old, there, Avon Old Farms is good hockey. Right. And good hockey. Good everything. Um, oh, yeah. All boys school. That. But really good ah. hockey. And it, it, it was our rivalry because it was only 10 minutes away. And this was the only game that anyone came. Our basketball Game, our team was so bad that only parents would come. Right. No students are coming to the like the three and seventeen team. Right. Um everyone would come to the Avon Old Farm game. That was the only one. And Is me it because and, of a rival because they were so good? Like why it was would because they, they were good. That? They were ten minutes away. So like Q kids? Q kids. That's gonna do it. Yep. All the girls want to hook up with the with the Avon Old Farm game. Black kids? Yeah, they yeah. That's what that's also yeah. a selling point. We had one or two. You know? Oh, you did. Yeah, it's a boarding. It's a boarding prep school. You got. You got to diversify. Um, did they start? I hope so. One of them didn't. Here's what happened with That's our team. That's the problem. We had a bunch of like kids that were just athletes on our team because we couldn't feel like a full team. So there were a couple, a couple of kids that just played defense. They were like lacrosse guys. <laughs> oh, the head coach of the lacrosse team was also the head coach of the basketball team. So he just had kids oh. on our team because he knew that it was a good workout to practice for lacrosse because i guess lacrosse is a lot of like back and forth and right, right right you know so he's like i'm gonna show him put this these guys on our team they'll play good defense we're not gonna pass on the ball on offense if so it was a really it was a shitty team it was the worst team okay i've never heard of a defensively minded our, basketball team that's all our thing was we had this like defense he's like guys we know we can't put the ball in the hoop. All we can all we can practice is defense because that's the only thing you can control. Right. So the final score was like nine to two. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like twenty six to like fifty four. Right. Them. Right. It was like a child's <laughs> basketball yes. game. Yes. Um. So Avon Old Farms game. It was my senior year. I was the only person probably with like within five years of Westminster that could dunk. I was like, it was you like, could dunk. Yeah, yeah. Still can. Yeah. Yes. I'm no, six foot seven. I got long arm. I got look at this wingspan. It's out of the it's out of the screen. I never. I've known you for four years. I've never seen you jump. Yeah, well, um, it's comedy. I guess you're holding <laughs> it in. So me and this point guard, we had this system where like, if if we have a breakaway, and I and I'm behind him and he's on the breakaway, I say CC. That was our name. That was our word. CC. I don't know why he came up with it. But he would be leading and you throw it off the backboard and I'd follow up and jam it. Ollie oop off the backboard. Did they look sick? It looked good, but we only had done in practice. We never You never did it in a we game. We never did in a game. Avon oh boy. Old, Avon Old Farms games. Everyone's in the stands, pack stands. CC was being thrown out. <laughs> we finally get an opportunity. This is the first time we've ever had an opportunity to do the CC in a game. He goes up, he throws it off the backboard way too high, and I, <laughs> I fully miss it. I don't even graze it. <laughs> and it just was all the air out of the stadium. Everyone's like, <gasps> and it was just silence, and it was just so brutal. And I still talk to the kid. Whenever I see him, I'm like, dude, I think about that once a year is missing that because it would have been so good. I would have gotten laid for the first time. Right. My life would have been completely different. I wouldn't have been you a wouldn't comedian. Be doing comedy. wouldn't have been doing comedy. It would have been so good. Is that your breaking point? Everyone has like, what was, why are you doing comedy point? Yeah. 
Was that it? No, I, th- I think the real reason, if I like had to do like a uh, therapist type answer, I think it's because I'm the youngest of five. Oh, I wasn't expecting a deep yeah. philosophical <laughs> answer here. Yeah, yeah, no, actually it was Dave on Old Farm Game. Yeah. After I missed that all year, I was like, I'm going to do comedy. That's what I need to do. That's, <laughs> the only way, that's the only way I can remedy this situation of missing the all you. Or you missed, you missed the all you, and then when you landed, you were like, you know what? I'm the youngest of five. I feel like I have to project a lot of the I time. Just, I just walked off the court and went to the to the speaker and just started doing comedy after that. <laughs> <laughs> I called a timeout and said, all right, guys, we're going to do some comedy for the next 30 seconds. Full timeout. We're going to do 60 seconds. <laughs> so how's everyone's New, Year, New Year's resolution how's going, New huh? New resolutions. Anyone? Can you imagine? That would be the best video ever. Some guy, Some kid calls a timeout mid-game and goes over and starts doing comedy during the timeout. <laughs> The coach is like, what the fuck is this? They're, they're down 30. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it would be you. W- you were grinding back then. I, I have a moment I remember. I don't know if it's why I do comedy. I think I do comedy for many reasons. But in high school, my town has a lacrosse day mm-hmm. where all the youth teams scrimmage and play each other. And then at the end, the high school team scrimmages uh-huh. like a red versus white situation. It's in November. All the youth teams scrimmage first. All the youth teams scrimmage first, and then the multiple fields. And then the headline, multiple fields. Right. Headliner. Right. High it's school the high varsity. School team. They scrimmage against each other. Scrimmage against each All other. Right. And there's probably like 400 people there, and I was playing. How they got them? <laughs> so what? Yeah, what they did was they, they did it through Craigslist. <laughs> a lot of posters. Drinks. Yeah, there was a Barker we had outside, and. They're like, it's a $10 cover. Lacrosse but, game. Come in for your free lacrosse game. <laughs> right. Just standing outside the fu- on the highway. And uh, they were still on McDougal Street, actually. Still asking people <laughs> if they want to come see a lacrosse game. Flyer. <laughs> right. Who's like the one lacrosse guy that everyone knows? <laughs> it was Dan Polzello, actually. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. No one listening to this knows who fucking Dan Polzello is. Nah, they'll comment. Comment Dan Polzello. D- right. At Dan Polzello on Instagram. Yeah. And uh, I'm playing. And I get the ball at by the goal. They pass me the ball. I run to the halfway point, Uh and I was exhausted. I couldn't breathe. So I pass the ball off, and I run off the field. I call a sub in. What? And the coach comes up to me, and he uh, he goes, Apple, what happened over there? I was like, Coach, I'm out of shape, Coach. And he goes, yeah, you're out of shape. You know what also doesn't help? Being so fucking fat. (laughs) (laughs) And, and I, all the audience starts cheering. They're like, yes. <laughs> and they start going, him. fat, fat, <laughs> fat, fat. And I was just on a knee, and I was like, you know he's got a point. <laughs> you take off your helmet, lie it down, lie down your lacrosse so they can walk straight to your car. <laughs> and I didn't come back until March when the season started. Yeah. I didn't even go back to school. No, but then like a year later, I lost like 70 pounds. And I went right. back, and I was like, coach, you know I lost the weight. And also started comedy. Because you yelled... I was a fat fuck. Did you tell him that? Yeah. And what he was did like, say? I would never say something like that. <laughs> and like my mom was there. My mom was like, I heard you say it. He's and like, like, you're it's not good. recording this, are you? I don't want to get canceled. Oh, no. That was a whole separate. This guy. You Can could, you imagine you cancel him? Can you imagine you He say tried his, to get canceled, this guy. You could look it up on the news. He tried to get canceled? No, he like, they tried people to People tried to get, him. right. It was like what two, happened? It was like two, three, eh, three, four years ago. It's hard to cancel a high school lacrosse coach. Not this They're guy. already at the bottom. This guy's a bit unorthodox. When I was on the team, he wrote a letter to us, and he uh-huh. hung it on each of our lockers about how we, how hard we have to play for the next game, and if anyone has a problem with that, he'll fight our dads. This was in the letter. This was in the letter to a public school. That's so good. I love the idea. He threatened to fight our debts. Yes. I love the idea of him knowing that he can't fight you. So the only way he can inflict pain upon you is to beat up your dad. Your father. You. And I'll be honest. He would have fought, beaten most of their dads. Yeah. He's Very, a cross coach. Yeah. They were, he's prepared. Right. They work in offices. Yeah. They wouldn't have done well. But Did he fight any dads? Not to my knowledge. But three, four years ago, they lose in the county championship. Uh-huh. And he goes, none of you are worth that jersey. Everyone take your jersey off and pass it up on the bus. So everyone takes their jersey I off. I love this guy. Everyone takes it off, passes it up. What a few of the kids did. And now let's also put an asterisk here. These are pretty funny kids. Uh-huh. They also took the shorts off. Because <laughs> technically that's a part of it. they took shits in them. And they took <laughs> and they shits in the shorts up. and they passed it up. And they walk off the bus 
just in their Under Armour, just with nothing, just like short, like the uh, Under Armour shorts on. And their parents are like, what the fuck happened? They're like, coach told us we can't wear the shorts. First of all, not so they tried to cancel him for that? So they tried to cancel him for that, amongst other things. I like that. I think ca- that's completely fine. Telling 300-pound kids they're fat fucks to an audience yeah. of four or 500 people. There were things that happened. Well, here's, here's the thing. A couple things. A, that speech about taking off your jersey and you not being worried, that's like a common speech that all coaches do. You know what I mean? They're like, you didn't try. You don't right. deserve. You didn't represent the county i get whatever it is i think that's fine and then also telling athletes that they're fat fucks go ahead you're not supposed to be fat unless he was it's a like thousand unless percent it's wrestling correct. he was 100 percent correct on call here's a here's another thing he did during one practice we weren't passing well he also showered with the players that's why i forgot to <laughs> one say. thing he also did if we had a good game we had to softly kiss him on the lips <laughs> and then whoever kissed him the softest Got to sit next to him. He also had a lot of parties uh, in his basement with all of us uh, under Right, lights drinking. off. So, uh, one practice we weren't doing well, so he blew the whistle and called everyone in, and we thought we were about to like have like a big conditioning practice. And he called the captain up, and uh, the captain Illyrio De Morales. I don't know why I'm saying all these names. And he called him up, and he goes, Illyrio, you're the captain of this team. I have a question for you. What? nationality are you (laughs) (laughs) and we were all like because we were also wondering what it was (laughs) because he was like it's Illyrio you thought he was everyone finally started listening and they're like we need to listen to this usually we tune this guy out he's like I'm half like Portuguese but I'm also half Iranian and he was like yeah I knew it was something weird all right go sit back back down back to the practice Uh, have you watched Rory Scovel's show it's on YouTube or something like that it's essentially kind of like that. He's like a re- like non PC coach, and it's pretty funny. I got to see this. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. No coach I ever had was PC. I think that makes a coach. I'm trying to think. There was one coach. I, I don't know if we ever found out, but this my coach in co- in high school claimed that he played for Purdue, and we looked it up, and we couldn't find any record of him playing for Purdue. And I was like, this seems odd because you have there has to be record. You know what I mean? Right. And I like what we're imagining. I was like, why would you even like say that you played for Purdue if you didn't play for Purdue? Like to get and that's such a weird school. Yeah, why say Purdue? Right. Good say something good. School. You went see Duke. Right. Do something, but cool jerseys. Very cool jerseys. I once had a coach, my lineman coach, high school football. Whenever you missed a block, he would say, "I bet if there was hair around it, you'd hit it." And we never knew what that meant. Yeah, yeah. And then one day in college, I was just sitting there, and I was like, "Oh, he meant oh. vaginas. That's what he meant." That's so. I love. I love the idea of a a coach that's so on PC and like just yells it because like whatever. It's sports, right? Sports aren't PC. Like we're hitting each other. That's we're not right. Fighting each other. Yeah, we're fighting legally. each other. That's not right. Taken out of sports, but on sports, there's no rules. Did you ever trash talk people in sports or no? Yeah. You're a big trash talker? I wasn't a big trash talker because it was back then I wasn't as confident with my comebacks. Right. Like, if I did stand up for six years and at the time, yeah, yeah. I would have felt prepared. But yeah. Yeah. We would play these hoods. We played uh, Hempstead one year. Now, Hempstead, we played at Hempstead. And the game was for uh, Halloween. And we uh-huh. had to postpone the game till November 1st because the Bloods do their initiation <laughs> on the field on Halloween. And I was like, they reserved the field? <laughs> yeah, they get a permit. <laughs> yeah, like I, <laughs> these are very efficient nah, Bloods. the Bloods have it. It's fine. But then we played them, and one kid uh, threatened to stab me on the offensive line. I was offense. He was defense. And I was like... You just walk off again. Okay. You're like, coach, I'm in shape this time, but they're threatening to stab me. Well, you can't move. You know, that's a false start. Yeah. So I was like, he's got me in a, he's got me in a, he didn't stab me. Yeah. Can Were you a trash you talker? Just you? I wasn't a trash talker, but if someone trash talked me, I just had a stock line. I said, does your coach know you're out here? That's funny. That's my only, I go, how'd you sneak out on the court? Like, how'd you sneak out here? Like that. And then I would just wouldn't trash. There was one freshman year of college, freshman year of high school. My, my, my school, you had to play sports at all times. So I played oh, soccer on the worst team. It was called fourths. There's varsity, fourths? JV, thirds, fourths. Jesus. And it's the worst soccer. I never played soccer in my life. 
I was like, it. yeah, it's just zeros. Every game's schools? like zero zero. That's how bad it is. <laughs> yeah, we played other schools because they wanted it was a boarding school, so they wanted kids to have like something to do. They didn't want them just sitting right. around that smoking makes pot, you know. So I tried out for uh, the first day of school was orientation and tryouts. So freshman year, I didn't know anyone. Okay. I walk in, I have like these brand new shin guards and cleats looking like an idiot. You know, like the kid school. that shows up with new equipment is the guy that make gets made fun of because he's like he's school, never that's played. Everyone. Yeah, but I think there's there's still that level of like, oh, this kid fucking hasn't played soccer before. He's got these brand new cleats. Right. And this one kid, Will Danforth. Fuck fucking Will, Will Danforth. Screw you, Will Danforth. But he uh I was like a freshman, he was a junior, and we were all like putting on our like gear and stuff. He goes, Did you just look at my dick? And I'm like, What? I'm like a shy kid. I don't know anyone. He goes, You just looked at my dick. And I was like, No, nah, no, I didn't. And he's like, Everyone, this fucking kid looked at my dick. And it was just like, Who is this asshole? Just like picking. I didn't do anything. But I played but on good fo- dick. Yeah, it was a good dick. <laughs> I, I was looking at it. It was pretty good. <laughs> He wore really skinny shorts, and you could see the, the tip of it. It was pretty nice. It was nice. Yeah. For a junior. <laughs> yeah. Above his, above his weight class. That's what he said to everyone. He's like, all right, looking at my dick. But, um, yeah, one uh, for a few games, I don't know if you recall this, Nike came out with these contacts. The red contacts yes. that were the sun. Yes. Yeah, I remember. Why did I say that initially? Why did I know exactly what you're talking Isn't about? Isn't it pretty? So I, I, had, I had bad eyes, so my doctor or whatever was like we can give you a free trial of these red contacts so i was like sure so i put them in and pretended i was this like skit like that was a little bit of trash talk where i would just stare at kids with red eyes and they thought i was albino because i was really pale white hair and i had these red eyes and i'll just stare at them and uh for for fourth soccer i uh I would do that. And hockey might go no to... No punchline to that joke. No punchline. Just, just a good, genuinely good story. <laughs> and hockey, my go-to line uh, was, I like those skates. I used to have them, but then my mom got a job. That was my, go, that was my go-to. That hockey was kids are fucking good chirpers. Yeah. Hockey kids are good chirpers. I would say nice skates, nice gloves. I remember when I had them, but then my mom got a job. All right. That was my... Hockey kids. Every hockey kid could be a professional comedian. They're every fucking on it. Cool. What? Every, I feel like every hockey kid is cool. There's a certain like... Mm. To the hockey it's kid. a very specific type of cool. Yeah. They're also very sexually open. Right. They don't walk around with clothes on ever. They're always playing with each other's dicks. Well, very legs. great legs. Great asses yeah. on these hockey kids. Yeah. The hockey parents, hockey parents are the worst. So the hockey kids, best shit talkers, hockey parents are like the most violent parents. Yeah. I remember one year we were playing Cold Spring Harbor, which is like a p- real preppy town. My we're- mic might have been off that whole time. Really? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> I just turned it back on. Yeah, we'll say. <laughs> we'll say. We'll do it in post. No, I'll be fine. Uh, we were playing Cold Spring Harbor. We're killing them. And this one dad goes in back of our goalie and bangs the glass. And our goalie turns around and the ga- dad gave him the finger. Jesus. And the kid was like, what do I do? What do, I, what do you do with that? I, I also do like the idea of like a, a parent being way into the kid's sports, especially when he knows that they're not going to be pro. Like was this right. kid like any good? Like was he? Oh, uh, the goalie, yeah. He goalie thought was he was really going to go to the NHL and then wow. he actually might listen to this. So I won't yeah. talk too much. But <laughs> yeah, things didn't work out. Uh, and then one year we played, we played another hood school, Uniondale. Mm-hmm. We go there. It's their homecoming against us. And we were like the best team in the league. So it was like a weird, like, why did you choose your homecoming against us? Right. There was a crackhead selling fake tickets to our parents at the front of the gate. It was like that was big of a, it was that big of a game where like the whole stands were packed. It was filled. You need to get tickets in advance. <laughs> no, it was like we were the rich white school, and uh, we're going. So he's like, I'm just gonna oh try to scam them and scam them and pay me five dollars for a ticket, right? Because I'm a crackhead, right? And he got the money, so right. kudos to him. Good for him. And I as we're it. warming up, a gigantic brawl starts in their stands, mm-hmm. and then as they're fighting, 
the PA announcer goes, uh, the homecoming dance tonight's canceled. <laughs> and then the fight just added on to that. <laughs> the homecoming dance is canceled. So there were fight. I love the <clears throat> idea of like school versus school, high school fights. Af- after a sporting event in the parking lot, kids are talking trash and they fight. Oh, yeah. Would you go to concert? Did you, you'd go like Nassau Coliseum for Nassau concerts? Nassau Coliseum, Jones Beach, yeah. And there would be like, you'd go when you were in high school, right? And that was like the bit. Would you guys tailgate outside and like party and stuff like that or no? No. So our parents would come to a, I saw Avenged Sevenfold and Bullet for My Valentine <laughs> with my friend's dad at oh. Nassau Coliseum. It was weird. Jesus. People were shooting up heroin next to us. And I'm like, I like this monster energy. Jesus Christ. We would go to the, we would go to uh, the Meadows, Hartford. Uh, there's like a big outdoor music venue in Hartford where all the like Coldplay all the like big acts would come and we would go to every single concert just because it was a chance to like party and tailgate and drink we would go at like two o'clock and our parents would be like well the concert doesn't start till eight why are you going so early I'm like well we got to get parking and so like we would pretend like we're how like how old were you probably like 15 16 really yeah, yeah. kudos yeah that's cool and I didn't would... start drinking until senior year of high school though Oh, really? I was a late bloomer. Yeah. Youngest of five. I probably had my first beer in like seventh grade. That's that's pretty cool. (laughs) That's why I'm an idiot. Is that why? (laughs) Did you go to boarding school your whole time? Or prep school, I I guess? No, I was in Catholic school um, Mm. until through eighth grade, and then I went to boarding school. Big loser in boarding school because I was a day student. That's looked down on. Yes, there's 15% of the kids are day students, 85% are boarders, and the day students are losers because they don't interact with everyone. You're not on the campus. I'm not the on the campus. Time, right. I leave after school. Everyone else gets to party and hang out together after school, and I just leave. So the, the day students are losers. Now, how accurate was Zoe 101? I've never seen it. you never seen it? No. All right. Well, that was my only example of uh, boarding school. I don't know a single person that went to boarding school. Yeah. I'm trying to think of anyone else. There's some comedians that I, know, that I know that went to. The host of New York Comedy Club that uh, just does that hosting set. Host of New York Comedy Club that just does the hosting? Host at the open mic. Oh, that guy, Anthony, sad Anthony, yes, Anthony. What a sad I forget person. Where, I forget where he went, but he went to some boarding school. He's never he to, told like, a joke something. once. That's all he and does. He's been doing it for like probably like I, seven, eight years. And that's the only thing he does now. He's like given, he's like essentially quit, but he still likes to just host one. one. He does the Monday open mic. That's all he does. Seriously. That's all he does. Yeah. He doesn't go to any that. other mics. He's not trying. Like, you know, he lives with Osama. Osama, like. Well, Li- he doesn't live with Usama. Usama lives with him. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which is such a wild story. Because I don't think that guy pays for his apartment either. He's been in so many careers. Why? I don't even know why we're talking about this guy. In the no Anthony. one knows him. Anthony. This guy, he's had 17 real estate jobs. Since we don't I've want Anthony's him. followers to shadow man us. So he's got he's, a lot of people. He probably got more than me. <laughs> what the fuck? And probably buys them though. What a sad guy. He just goes up there and talks about how suicidal he is. And he's like, all right, we ready for the mic? Yeah. That's the, you know, t- taking a thing out of my book, man. No, no, because he That's doesn't say from. this could be good. This could- <laughs> and no, and not no one point in his it. set. Now you got me all self-conscious about saying it. I, I, like, I think it's, uh, I like the idea of someone going and being like, it's not all going to be amazing. Which a lot of people, I feel like sometimes people go to a comedy show and they feel scammed because like, oh, whatever, like people are a level go up and they, and they suck, you know? Yeah, but at the time, most people go to like the cellar. Right. The sh- uh, really the cellar. I don't really know anyone that goes anywhere else. Made some to stand. Right. But what was I going with this? You're oh, gearing- they've never like, they don't know we suck yet. Right. Yeah, I guess the I guess the fact of the matter is that no one really knows any comedians. There's like maybe ten comedians that are actually known, um, and everyone else is a nobody. Exactly. Even someone like a Mark Normand, where no one who's knows Mark. like the king in New York. Probably no one outside of comedy fans know who he is. No one in New York knows who he is. Right. It doesn't matter. That's why you're like, oh, what do you want me to bring you up with? Yeah. Doesn't matter. No one knows who I am. Yeah. What are you going to say? This guy was on Barstool for 20 minutes getting ripped apart 
The best was this guy last night. I was like, what do you want me to bring you up as? He's go, he goes, people are doing credits. And I go, yeah, people are doing credit. What do you mean? <laughs> and he goes, all right, say that I have an album on Sirius. An album on Sirius? Yeah. Is that Sirius how albums XM. work now? I don't know. But I guess he was trying to get people to listen to Sirius. Like, I was like, do you want me to say that? No, you think he was pitching Sirius more than he was pitching I was pitching like, I don't know album? what this, like, I don't think that's a qualification. I was like, how about after, I was like, is it on iTunes? He's like, yeah. I was like, how about after your set? I'll tell people to buy your thing on iTunes. I don't get people being like... Is that, but iTunes isn't around anymore. Yeah, it is. Is it? Yes, iTunes. I thought I think it, Apple they, abandoned iTunes. Maybe I it's called music or something. Oh, I don't know okay, what it's called. It's the same thing. But the idea that people bring themselves... they want Their credit is that they have an album. I'm like, that's not, it's not helping credit. the crowd. It's not a credit. You should say that after you're set. By right, the way, right, right. this guy's got an album on iTunes. Download it. Then they might be like, all right, let me download this album. Well, I knew credits didn't matter. I've known for a while, but then I went to see uh, Eric Newman do his first set at the cellar. Yeah, and uh, the host brought him up, saying, "You know him from his podcast, Eric Newman. Doesn't have a podcast. Not only does no one not know who he is, no one he doesn't have a podcast. Give it up for his podcast. Eric, he has a podcast called Eric Newman. Give it up for Eric Newman. <laughs> it's a self-titled someone podcast. <laughs> his a- podcast is called Eric Newman. Give it up for Tony G's. Yeah, no one gives. The the only thing comedy's ever gotten me so far was I got that barstool thing. I did barstool yeah. idol, and then for a year and a half, I would go to bars on the Lower East Side and get a shot. Yeah, because people knew me from that. What do you think about barstool? You wouldn't consider working there. I don't fully agree with where they're taking the company. Where would you? In terms of where, where would you comedy say they're content. They're taking it the gambling route, which I think is a good idea. Right. But I don't agree with how what they're doing with comedy. Yeah. I, I think it's like really bad. What do you mean comedy? Like they're playing to like the younger TikTok generation. Right. I guess they don't. I mean, I, I, I just I really only follow Dave Portney. I don't follow any of their other stuff. But it seems like they just have a shit ton of nice, like, well, good podcasts. And then they do these like little short videos. I love the fact that they're doing. It's like a reality show. Have you been on their what YouTube? Oh yeah, no, no, no. That's a great that's idea. That's an insane. Great idea. It's like The Office, but real. That's what they should do. I mean, that's what Rogan did in two thousand nine. What he was doing like a reality thing. He hired a camera crew to go on tour with him. There was a few other people. I think uh, a Meta Men might have been. I might have just made that up. Right. But yeah, he hired them and then would put the clips on his website. That's people want. I think the, that yeah, they want the real. Let's talk about this over one. People don't want to hear about this shit. I don't think people care. Do you, you guys don't? <laughs> no, come on, guys. We start doing crowd work with the audience that we can't talk. Call to. in. Come let on, us guys. know what you think about us doing this. That's just uh, Apple being like, we hit an hour, and I want to get the hell out of here. <laughs> yes and no. I just don't think people care that Me much. Me and Hardy are doing eight hours. Apple's like, I can't talk to fucking Tobin for yeah, an I'm hour. Yeah, I'm in in and out. <laughs> Hardy telling me, Hardy was supposed to do this fucking podcast and he tells me a day later he's in Ohio. You'll see Hardy eventually. Uh, but yeah, that's everything. What should people, where should they see you? Because you got 14 accounts active right now. Where should people look? I would say the most important thing is to go to TobinMillerComedy.com. Oh, you have a website? I have my podcast there. I've got baby shower information there. I'll probably have the t-shirts up there, but um, Instagram, Tobin Miller Comedy, but go to TobinMillerComedy.com. I got my commercial on there. I got sketches, videos. Hey, he was in a, uh, what was the app? ZocDoc commercial. Yeah, he was in a ZocDoc commercial. That's your big gap. If you watch CNBC, you'll notice it very quickly. It goes (laughs) very quick. It might be a- 30 30 seconds. There's no way. I I think it's 15. I think they cut it. And I'm being dead serious. I think they made a 15 second commercial. I haven't seen it on TV. The one you put up is not what goes on TV. Really? Can you see my face or no? You can see your face, but by the time I get my camera out to take a picture, it's done. Yeah. It it has to be 15 seconds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it. And he's also non-union. So if you need anything, he's the guy. Yeah. All right, team. Tobin Miller. Adios.